Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, episode 100. Ah, ooh. Say hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. For approximately the hundredth time. <laughs> <laughs> As you might recall, last episode, we kind of went insane for about 10 minutes. And, <laughs> and in between that, we were appealing to our listeners to send us some feedback. Um, and you did. And I'm very impressed. Um, and we actually did get some very nice messages. So we're going to save that for a little bit later. I wanted to just have a, a very brief chat about our very first episode because I went back and listened to it and it was actually quite interesting to hear because it was in 2018 and the first thing we talked about on the podcast was Ubuntu 18.04, the LTS release. And Mike, before the recording, pointed out that that's reaching end of life in May, I believe. So we lasted an entire LTS life cycle. So, I mean, that's somewhat of an achievement, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's a continual surprise that we've lasted this long. But um, hey, we've we've had our ups and downs, and we've had our scheduling conflicts, and we've had our we've tried our hardest to um, hit the regular scheduling. But it uh, that has gone by the wayside on more than one occasion. So um, thank you guys for all sticking with us. If you've if you've been with us for the very beginning, then thank you for sticking with us. And if you're a new, relatively new person, then um, welcome along. And you um, have not experienced the cringe of the first episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, we were talking about that beforehand, though. The first episode was, the audio quality was terrible. Like, let's <laughs> call a spade a spade. Like, uh, it was one Yeti mic in the middle. Of, we've told this story probably about six times by now, but like those one Yeti mic in the middle of the table. And we were all just like, banging our hands on the table and Mike was typing and his laptop fan was right next to the mic and everything. <laughs> but other than that, I found the discussion not that bad. Uh, we were also all in the same room in person, so that probably made a difference as well. And now we're spread across two continents. Yeah. Yeah. Two continents and however many time zones. <laughs> Five. A and um, Amulet was not there at the time, but Amulet was there in spirit. Exactly. He was listening. <laughs> After the fact, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to shout that out. We talked about a couple of other things, but I think the the 1804 thing was the thing that really stuck out. And the fact that it's now, uh, we're now due another LTS any day, any day now. So, yeah, what else? We, do? we talked about Unity as well. That's a real throwback. Um, oh, wow. Um, yeah, and GNOME 3 versus Unity. Talk about how how the supposedly lightweight uh, desktop environments are trying not to go for the lightweight label anymore because it comes with all a so lot of problems when you set the people's expectations. And I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't think lightweight comes into. It used to be a lot when you listened like ten years ago when you listened to podcasts. The def differentiation between the uh, GNOME between GNOME KD on one side and let's say XFCE and LXDE on the other, always was mentioned that one of them, that one group is uh, more is harder on your uh, graphics and other computing resources, while the other is lightweight. That was always said, and now I don't hear it as often, no very as often, because I guess as soon as people started putting uh, SSDs SSDs into their computers, that's one of the major improvements that kind of, you know, once, once SSDs are cheaper and, uh, uh, you know, have bigger sizes, then suddenly one of the major problems with running a, a heavier desktop environment is gone. Yeah. Then you, of course, have RAM, but these days everything has got at least, even if you have a super old computer, everything has got at least eight gigabytes anyway. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but yeah, it does not get mentioned at all, as often. Plus, there is a proliferation of, uh, uh, like, um, uh, you know, stacking desktop window managers, sorry, window managers, like uh, i3 and so on. So people who like to run uh, super controlled environments uh, with uh, minimum of bloat, they can install those. So, you know, I think, I don't know where I'm going with this. My recall from the the time and was that it was down to RAM usage, that they're always doing metrics and they're saying, oh, uh, like 
KDE and GNOME are so bloated because like they could be using eight or nine hundred megs of RAM at idle, like an, on cold boot, and then as soon as you open up something like Chromium, you could be up to uh, a gig and a half of RAM or, or or even north of that. And at the time, thinking back into twenty eighteen, you could have had a computer that was only had four gigs of RAM in it, and like a gig and a half of RAM would be a fairly significant chunk out of your your total RAM usage and maybe there's an argument of them saying oh well uh, XFC uh, rather than using 8 or 900 megabytes of RAM out of the out of the gate might use like 6 or or 5 or 600 megs of RAM um on cold boot and then there was a significant change but Mike you're you're dead right these days that that is kind of faded into the background because what computer doesn't have at least eight gigs these days? So um, there, there should be plenty to spare, even with the more quote unquote heavier um, desktop environments such as GNOME or KDE. Yeah, and and in the future, of course, we can just download more RAM. That's true. <laughs> well, actually, you're not you're not that right of the mark. Uh, one thing that never has been in the news before, but basically happened during the duration of this podcast, was that. At least Intel are either thinking or already doing the thing where you buy hardware of them, and if you pay them extra subscription, it will make the hardware better. Basically, for extra money, they will enable uh, some functionality on the processor that you build. So, the f- the 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 idea that you buy a laptop with eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, but if you pay the vendor or whoever extra 20 quid a month you can turn it to 16 gigabytes that idea is not to me very wide of the mark in fact uh, it could be happening to to do a devil's advocate on that argument um for intel it's very much on their their xenon platform it's their enterprise grade it's um, in meant to be for mainframe supercomputers and they're they're like oh well these people will gladly pay for um, extra um, CPU resources or whatever. And it was, I think it's specifically CPU rather than RAM or any, any other um, consideration because those um, will r- easily run like 128 g- uh, gigs of RAM, 256, even half a terabyte or even a terabyte of RAM when you're talking about those kind of mainframe computers, so those mainframe servers. I remember when I started with Linux back in 2017, 2016, something like that, it was a really terrible Chromebook that had two gigs of RAM, and it was a dual-core 1.1 gigahertz processor. I was looking for the most lightweight distro I could possibly find, and now I've, I've built my own PC, and it has everything I need. Did you use Puppy Linux? I don't know anyone who actually used that as a daily driver no i was i was using uh i think what i eventually landed on was bunsen labs an arch derivative oh uh, yeah yes. i remember i used that once upon a time mm-hmm. yeah it was good that was used to be crunch bank right yeah there was crunch bang and then there was uh bunsen labs and crunch bang plus plus were the two spiritual yeah. successors to it mm-hmm there were those ones that are based on like open box or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Debian with Debian with open box. I was using the Arch version with i3, and I actually used that uh, Polybar config for years. That would have been a thirty-two gig processor, right? A 32, 32 bit processor, wouldn't it? No, mine was sixty-four bit. Oh, okay. It was just a really lightweight Intel something or other. Another thing that happened is that 32 bits gone away. So I'm I'm thinking on one side that maybe nobody has a has hardware that can't run a modern desktop and room bands, but maybe that's a bit privileged. Like a lot of people might be using 15 year old hardware that wasn't were the best to begin with. My recall was that um, Intel introduced 64 bit in the Core 2 era. Lies in, you know, the Core 2 Duo and the Core 2 Quad and all of those. So anything newer than that should run, a, run should be able to run a 64-bit operating system. But there was like, didn't they still in parallel used to use those Pentium and Celeron processors or something? I'm not a big on Intel stuff, so I don't know much about it. Yeah, you would find those in mobile devices and stuff like laptops and things like that. 
so a netbook that came out like 2010 could still have a 32-bit processor and people might still be using it. I had um, I had like an Asus EPC or whatever they were called. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that was running uh, a Celeron. And that wasn't, that wasn't that long ago. We're talking, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years-ish. I mean, the, the names still exist. I mean, you can still find... Um, new Intel CPUs that are called Celerons. So they, they, they use the, the the naming convention still. Mm. But these days they would probably run 64-bit, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. One would hope. <laughs> no, I, I, I meant the fact that it was labeled a Celeron doesn't necessarily mean that it was 32-bit. Mm. So, yeah, I guess the whole point of me going back to that first episode to have a listen was I really wanted to find some things that were like, oh my God, we were way off the mark or that has completely changed and gone beyond our expectations, et cetera, et cetera. But what struck me was that that really wasn't the case. I mean, that could have been an episode from last year, uh, really, in terms of what we talked about. Um, like, there's just a lot of old faithfuls, like we spoke about Linux Mint, Elementary OS, KDE Neon, Zorin OS, which we've talked about a lot since as well. You know, GNOME 3, Ubuntu, I guess that was probably old news, but um, by now, by now, nowadays standards anyway. Uh, KDE Neon, you know, uh, Windows as a service or something. I don't really know what that talk was about, but... <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one thing that never happened. So Windows, Microsoft ah, was saying okay. there will never be Windows 11, so they were off the mark on their own stuff. <laughs> and uh, there was a rumor going around that uh, Microsoft will... St- start selling subscription windows so you buy a laptop i think it was like this right so you buy a laptop and you pay microsoft every month for the pleasure of using uh, windows pleasure <laughs> uh yeah i mean um yeah, yeah okay so that never happened <laughs> the self-flagellation of using windows yeah the cat on nine tails <laughs> <laughs> the one thing though which was really funny we talked about mozilla doing stupid things and they're still um, which doing really, stupid things. Which really, <laughs> yeah. really hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, use Flash or still doing stupid things. <laughs> Mozilla's like new brand redesign, um, which yeah. I think they're still using to this day, which is interesting. It irked me back then. I remember I got so pissed off about it when they pushed, pushed out a press release that you could, like, that, that was obviously written by somebody who had uh, the corporate speak mastered, like, that was full of silos and transitions and whatever, right? Synergistic combinations. Yeah, it, it, so. was a f- it was a fucking mission <laughs> statement. And to be honest, Mozilla were lost back then. Mozilla are still lost, but I still use Firefox every day on every computer that, uh, that I have. And uh, it's still, for me, the best browser there is. So, yeah, they might be doing stupid shit, but they, the Firefox still still is the best browser for me. You just don't have a startup mindset. You don't have a disruptive mindset. That's all. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're clearly not investing 30 million in, in AI. So, Yeah, exactly. And there's no NFTs or blockchains anywhere in sight. Like, what, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. With, in, using a browser without a fucking NFT. Without an NFT? But using a browser without a fucking crypto wallet. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. We had an idea for April Fools. We never actually did it in the end, but um, because we kind of missed the publishing date, unfortunately, so it wouldn't have come out on 1st of April. But uh, we we had this thought that we would say, oh, for our 100th episode, we're we're minting it as an NFT. (laughs) (laughs) Which, yeah, God, can you imagine? So, uh, yeah, we're going to read out some of the comments. that we got uh, mainly through Mastodon. I think they're almost 100% through Mastodon. <laughs> there were a few emails. Oh, there were so. Oh, yeah, there was emails too. Oh, lordy. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, and YouTube comments. Great. And Telegram and Discord <laughs> and Matrix. Yeah. Was, I, I, Shane, scroll down a bit. <laughs> what, y- yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I didn't see those headers actually, so fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe this will be really boring. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll just read out some of the comments we got. Um, so Mastodon, uh, there's no name on this one, so I don't know who left it. Dead Beef. Dead. Be- oh, there it is right there. Dead Beef. Uh, I do recommend you keep sobriety levels low in the next 100 episodes. Wait, sobriety levels low? Which so means does that mean we should be drunk? drunk m- 
more okay yes we should be drunk more <laughs> we should be perpetually drunk and then and then our our content quality will increase okay <laughs> in the name of the sanity of jake the editor let's not yeah so i think yeah so so basically if we're a bit lit for every episode it's more entertaining is that what they're saying i think so <laughs> Um, isn't that what the kids? Isn't that what the kids say that nowadays lit? Um, That's what they used to say about five years ago, I think. So you, you're getting that shame. <laughs> oh wow, I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, lit AF, yeah. So uh, from I might be uh, wrong. I don't know. That's what my peers say. That's not what the 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 actual young people nowadays say. I don't know what they say. Well, I'm only busy <laughs> from where I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> From where you're standing, I'm young people. <laughs> yes, I mean... If you're under 30, you're just going to get lumped into the same bucket, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can put this out. Uh, well, no, the episode is out. So wasn't Amolith just invited to a Joe Resington podcast on the basis of being a, a techie people from Gen-, Gen Z? You know, you yes. are a Zoomer. You have to, you're going to have to embrace it. I was on Linux downtime specifically because I'm a Zoomer. <laughs> I really hate those labels because, oh my God, I hate them so much. Gen Z, Gen X, Zoomer, Boomer, I hate it all. I I am defending, I've been defending my millennial status to people uh, very vocally because, um, you know, it's I'm, I'm on the cusp one way or another, but I, I, I am basically saying to everybody I'm a millennial and I love that label. Because it pisses people off. Uh, <laughs> because you say you say it with pride. And a lot of people are like, "What? No, that's a that that's a that's an insult." I'm like, "No, I'm a millennial. I'm a snowflake. I, you know, and I'm also. Uh, it's it's like feeling less old, basically." Yeah. Well, all of the generational labels are used as insults. Like when you call <laughs> someone a boomer, it's an insult. When someone's called a zoomer, it's usually also an insult. <laughs> well, you can use it as an insult, but it's. It's not. That's like that's like calling you. I don't know. That's like calling you an American. Uh, it's the same. <laughs> Some thing, people would right? would take that as an insult. <laughs> All right, uh, but uh, generations have labels because uh, you know people love to label shit. Mm. I I know they are they are labels, but they're often used in the context of an insult, as in one generation insulting another generation. Yes, as like a, a blanket label for the entire generation and that's why i like to use this and that's why i like saying about myself that i'm a millennial because the people <laughs> who use millennial as an insult annoy me mm-hmm. great yeah but you yeah but it's your fault because it's it's our generation's fault like we we bought so much smashed avocado that we just can't <laughs> afford a house you know um <laughs> so yeah that's our fault i guess uh <laughs> uh so i'll move on to the another another one um uh, so from Linux Sys six six six, that's a very early naughties username. No offense, but <laughs> uh, good crack lads and happy upcoming one hundred party parrot emoji. Uh, it doesn't actually render on what I'm looking at, but I love party parrot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan. I do have a question about this one. What is? Did you say crack or or crake? Crack. crack. What? It, what is it's that? The Ar- Irish word for fun. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised you've never heard that before. I, I've heard um, it. I've just never heard it define. Ah, okay. okay. It's just the the Irish language word for crack or for fun. <laughs> okay. But it's it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of become its uh, become its own sort of vibe as well. Though it's become its own sort of term. You know, it's 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 Irish fun, which is different to other people's fun because I see. we pride ourselves on being the most fun. It's like Fr- France gets shirty about food. We get shirty about having a good time. It's like, no, the rest of the world can't have a good time like we have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a direct drop in re- replacement for fun. You can't use it in absolutely every single context, but we have our own version of saying it as well. So, yeah. Every Irish person knows when you say, oh, that was good crack. <laughs> uh, they, they know... They know, we know exactly what you mean. It's a specific type of fun. <laughs> and uh, for the sake of um, Apple podcast censors, uh, we mean crack as in Irish, fo- the word for fun, not crack as in croquet. Croquet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, croquet. Like croquet. Is that is that is that a Coke that they sell you on the corner of Croke Park? It's a croquette <laughs> with, with cocaine in it. <laughs> no, th- those are raisins. 
<laughs> Good reference. Um, so, uh, next one. This, w- this was a DM. It's all in capitals. Um, <laughs> uh, just finishing episode 99, I've been listening for a couple of months and find ver- find very good Linux conversations in the podcast. Greetings from Me- Mexico. Um, this is a picture of my hand holding the canonical CD of my first distro. Oh, uh, excuse my bad English. Uh, you don't, people don't, don't apologize for your, your bad English. It's, it's, it's an easy language to speak, even if you're not as experienced with it. I always find it hilarious because you can say three words in a row. People will probably know what you meant. Um. <laughs> and thanks God for that, because yeah, it's 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 a it's a gutter language, you know. It's easy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much. That was uh, Mal Mike. So uh, not any relation to Mike on this podcast. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, from Pete Petra Petra. I assume Peter. It's like Peter, but with the R and the E switched around. Uh, thanks for the podcast, guys. Congrats, and thank you. Hacker Defo says, Hi there, lads. Congratulations on approaching the 100th episode. Can I share the one thing I don't like about the show? It's the say hello, lads thing at the beginning of almost every show. I mean, it sounds like a kindergarten teacher cajoling the kids into doing something they'd not do by themselves. That's exactly why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so yeah, you're right. And that's, that's why I say it. <laughs> So, uh, by the way, you guys might want to take a look at Shell GPT. It's a CLI tool powered by GPT 3.5. I'm very, very cynical about all that stuff, so I probably won't be looking at that. (laughs) Can I pipe it straight into my pseudo uh, prompt? Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So, from Awful Piper, that's a great screen name. I love that. Uh, Best Linux podcast ever. Oof. Uh, The end was great. K, love you. Bye bye. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's a very irish way to sign off okay bye 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 um for those that don't know irish people have a habit of saying bye about 10 times when they end a phone call it's 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 a thing <laughs> it's true well it's also a reference to how we sort of ended the last episode with mike's yeah. k okay, thanks bye ah yes. nice okay <laughs> yeah, I, I, get, I get that now okay um we also got some emails, uh, some lovely emails. Um, thanks for the fun and informative podcast. I share your enthusiasm for Linux and enjoy your topics and discussions. Your episodes brighten my day and I look forward to seeing them in the queue of my podcast app. I really like that you are comfortable being yourselves. We're not. Uh, I hope this encouragement helps you know that people are listening and that you're making a positive difference in the world. That is a very nice, wholesome email. I love it. That's from Dupsnirg, uh in uh, Manassas, Virginia, USA. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, so from Zach, your podcast is one of the few that I automatically download without scrutinizing the show notes. First, your thoughtful conversation and authentic personalities are why I listen. The topics are always interesting and you're a great company as I go about my mindless household chores in the suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you all so much for providing the podcast. Happy 100 with love and respect. We're getting such nice, thoughtful emails. I love that. Thank you <laughs> to everyone who, who wrote in. Some very nice people listen to this podcast. We have the best listeners, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. Um, f- we, a YouTube comment. Oh, my God. I didn't even know people were leaving YouTube comments. Colonel Panic. Again, a great name. Thanks for the show, guys, and the infectious giggles at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my proudest moment, but some people seem to have liked we it. We kind of fell apart. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I actually listened back to it, and I was, like, dying inside listening to it. And uh, Oh, I, w- I was laughing along with us, again, every time I listened to it. I was as well. I was. It, it was 50-50. I was, I was kind of getting the giggles again, but I was also kind of like, oh, my God, like, did I make an absolute fool out of myself? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jake put my begging him not to put it in right at the end. <laughs> I just, it was oh, perfect. No. I know, yeah, it was a total gangster move. Uh, so from Telegram, Carlos Mora says, I'm a regular listener to your podcast, and I do enjoy the content. Thank you, Carlos. Discord? Jesus Christ, like, we go 100 <laughs> episodes, people don't leave any messages on any of these platforms, and then for the 100th episode, they do. <laughs> Listened last night and popped by to say, well done on the big 100. I am Irish, so the first time I heard an episode, I was listening through gritted teeth, hoping you didn't make us all look like fools. That's such an Irish thing to say. <laughs> Thankfully, you all have insight and useful knowledge, and the show has taken over the space that Linux Outlaws used to fill for me. Ooh, big shoes. 
Slightly shambolic at times, but entertaining and informative. I enjoyed the interview with Gabe. More like that, please. Yeah, I really enjoyed the episode with uh, Gabe from Oncast. That was fun. What does shambolic mean? Just kind of shoddy and crap, um, <laughs> but in kind of a char- charming way. Good. In disarray, in, in shambles, in chaos, okay, okay. in uh, not directed, you know, there's no... I think that's what it means. Anyway, I should probably shut up. I, I'm the only person here who doesn't speak English from birth. <laughs> I really love that word. Like, it's it's a fun word to say. Esquizo is, is his username. The, the, when he said I'm Irish, so the first time I heard an episode, I was listening through gritted teeth. That's the most Irish shit I've ever heard in my life because <laughs> we are like that. It's like, oh, Irish people are doing a thing that I'm used to other people from other countries doing. I hope they don't fuck it up. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they don't fuck it up and make us look bad. And also, he said, I'm hoping yous. Yeah, I know. Make us all look bad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I can really relate to that as well because, yeah, the, the, uh, any Irish first that I've seen, I'm like, oh god, please be good, please be good. So, uh, from Matrix, episode 99, everyone just wheezing <laughs> from Ax. <laughs> Axel, uh, I, I believe I know who that is. I f- we follow each other on Mastodon. Uh, so thanks, Ax. We were wheezing a lot. <laughs> More than made it into the final episode. Yes. Jake cut out quite a bit of wheezing. Yeah, amazingly. <laughs> Jake reorganized the shambles uh, into something that people could actually listen to. Speaking of Jake, we, sh- we should thank Jake for editing. Yes, Jake took over the thing that I don't like doing so I could focus on being more terrible at <laughs> the thing I do now. Um, so thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Uh, I, always, I always enjoyed the technical aspect of editing like doing the levels, the EQs and all that kind of techie stuff and learning how to use the programs and stuff. But the content editing, snipping around everything, making it all sound good, I hated all that. I really didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, thank you for taking that off my plate and letting me focus on other things. Yeah, for for somebody who took over the reins um, once or twice, um, there was a couple of times where Shane couldn't do it and I took over the reins for it. Yeah, like editing an hour-long episode can take like three four five hours <laughs> yeah it was it's like and that even if you do it for three or four hours that's that's at the short end of it mm-hmm. if you really want to make it sound really good and really like dial it in you could probably have spent twice that on it really jake's mentioned spending up to like five or six hours on these episodes yeah i mean minimum for me it was three or four hours before and that was just to get it somewhat good you know that i could have even gone a few more hours with a lot of episodes and made them sound even better but yeah well there was times when i was doing it by, by myself and i um just had to split it over two evenings because the first evening i was like i'm done no more time <laughs> being spent on that i'm saving the progress that it currently is at and tomorrow evening i'm going to take another fresh look at it and that was quite beneficial because towards the end of the night when you're like when you're getting to a stage where like I'm tired, I'm just done with this shit. That is exactly <laughs> at the point where you shouldn't be editing further. Exactly, because you're going to get sloppy and you're going to just like, I, that's when I start to cut corners. I'd be like, no, it's fine, it'll do. I'll just leave in that thing that's annoying me. I, I, I couldn't be bothered cutting around it. Um, so uh, yeah, th- so that was that was the feedback we got. We probably got a good bit more than that, I, I would say, which is quite, quite cool. Um, so if we didn't read out your comment, sorry about that. Thanks for sending us all that stuff. And hopefully you continue doing it in the future um, when you have uh, questions or feedback or anything. Or um, if you want to ever suggest people to have on the podcast, that's always... Because those are always the best episodes, in my opinion, when we talk to uh, a maintainer of a project. Yeah. Send us topics, guest suggestions, anything like that. I probably said it already, but thanks for all all of the feedback. Yeah, it was definitely great to see your your messages um a lot of them were very wholesome especially the emails it's always good to get those uh, messages that's kind of all we had to talk about so uh our socials i'm going to read them out in their entirety this time uh all of them all of the things that we're on so you'll there's something in there for everyone uh we have a store which is linuxlads.com forward slash store so you can buy a mug t-shirt things like that uh we get a, a kickback from that um you can go to our forum, which I honestly pushed for and have not posted on in like three months. 
So sorry. <laughs> it's very lightweight to <laughs> run. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Forum.linuxlads.com. So that's a good place to kind of discuss in more long form, you know, things about the episodes. We always post the show notes there and have a thread for each episode. So you can talk about each episode on there. Um, so uh, hopefully that takes off at some point. I don't know. Maybe people are just over forums. I don't know. But uh, we also have a Steam community. Uh, that's steamcommunity.com slash groups slash Linux lads. Uh, we're not always active. We are active from time to time. I mean, you can find us all our Steam handles within there and see when we're online playing games, which for me is like three times a year. Connor, maybe a little bit more often, I suppose. We're on Telegram, linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. Uh, Matrix, linuxlads.com forward slash Matrix. Discord, same as the rest of them, com slash Discord. Twitter, linuxlads.com forward slash Twitter. If if you want to do that, I don't know. It's up to you. Because <laughs> uh, personally, I haven't looked at Twitter in months, and I hear it's just going down the toilet, and it's just awful now. And that's not even like a cheap shot at Elon Musk. I, I've heard a lot of people say that it is like really crap now, and it breaks all the time, and it's just really bad. My girlfriend said that you cannot block Elon Musk's Twitter account anymore. <laughs> well, that's just the that's just the you know the democracy and open forum that he wanted in practice. Oh, of course, <laughs> yeah. He just want yeah he wanted a completely egalitarian open marketplace of ideas, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's he's turning it into my MySpace. Where do you remember in MySpace, you were automatically friended by this the, one of the founders or something. Tom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love Tom. <laughs> Everybody loved them. He had most friends on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find us on Mastodon, linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon. I think Mastodon is a great filter as well. The Fediverse is a little bit of a filter because you don't just get absolutely everyone joining um, because it's not qu quite as easy. I don't really understand people when they say when they have friction joining Mastodon because it doesn't seem that hard compared to something like Twitter. A little bit, maybe. Maybe a little bit slightly more confusing, but not that much. I think the issue tends to be they sign up on like mastodon.social and that's just a terrible experience because the people there are not invested in the Fediverse. When you mm. the, the first instance you sign up on it plays a huge role in how you perceive the platform as a whole. Yeah, I suppose. I'm on I'm on indieweb.social, which is actually a great instance. Mm -hmm. Um it's really well run. And I would like to the, give a shout out for the one that I'm on, which is fossadon.org. I found that it's a very nice balance of it is not so large that it gets the trolls or whatever that uh, Amalith is alluding to there. And, but it's also not so small that you don't get really positive kind of conversations. It's a nice balance between the two. I'm just techhelt at fossadon.org. And I am... Uh at stranded underscore output at indieweb.social. I am amalith at nixnet.social. N-I-X-N-E-T dot social. I'm at Mike E at social.lol. That sounds like a made up one. <laughs> oh, that's a real one. And uh, yeah, follow me. I basically do not much there. I just post a cat photo every now and then. <laughs> well, your cat is very adorable, so that's fine. I think that's enough. Yes, she indeed is. Yeah, go Luna. And uh, most importantly, you can email us on show at linuxlads.com. I say most importantly because I think email is the most, you know, democratized of any of these things, you know. It's like email is just email. Gets direct to us. We see it with our own eyes. It doesn't go through any with any other server. St straight to us. Boom. Okay, so that's that's us for this time, for the hundredth time. Ha <laughs> ha. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you for Linux Lads 101 next time, <laughs> which sounds cool. All right, see you in uh, two weeks-ish. See you guys. Adios. Bye. Um, okay, that was grand.